Am I the a-hole for telling my brother that I want an apology from his wife and not him? My 11-year-old son goes to a skate park after school with his friends, who include his cousin slash my nephew Jack who is also 11. I went to pick up both boys, when I saw a crowd of kids by the fence. I went over and asked what was so interesting and they pointed to a snake. Not just a snake, but a rattlesnake. They had never seen one before, maybe outside a zoo. And I assumed they were trying to get it to strike because they didn't think they'd get bit. I told them all to get away from it. And they did, except Jack who actually got closer with his phone. I think he wanted to get a close-up video of the snake striking. I yelled at him to get away and he told me to hold on. So I took him by his arm and pulled him away. He gave me this angry stare. I told him, WTF, that snake could kill you. And he just gave me the silent treatment until his mom picked him up. Then 20 minutes later, she called me up in a rage about how I grabbed him, and did this and did that, and heard him etc. and that I'm not his dad. I asked her if her sweet angel told her about the rattlesnake that he was provoking. She said, what snake? And I just hung up. She called up again and said that I still owed her and Jack an apology for handling him. I told her to shut the heck up and check his phone and see if I did any of that stuff, as his camera was recording everything. An hour later, my brother called me up and said what Jack did was stupid and he was happy I was there, but I still owed his wife an apology for telling her to shut the heck up. I said I'm not apologizing for nothing, at least until she apologizes to me for coming at me sideways twice. He apologized and I said not acceptable. She needs to apologize. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I don't think you did anything wrong. If you didn't end up helping Jack, he would be snake poor right now. You're right to demand your sister-in-law for an apology. I mean, no rattlesnake can eat a human, so that's a silly suggestion, but otherwise right on. You're completely in the right here. Your brother demanded you apologize for dismissing a false accusation. So you're definitely not the a-hole for insisting she apologize for false accusations. He wants to avoid drama in the family? He should have handled the entire convo with you from the beginning. She comes in hot, she can be embarrassed. She also needs to thank him after the apology. The bratty nephew should have to apologize to his uncle for lying about the incident, and also acknowledging that he was in danger. Then thank uncle for probably saving his life or at least saving him from the trauma of a snake bite and subsequent anti-venom treatment. Or to give up his rides home from the skate park. Not the a-hole. I had a somewhat similar experience when I was in grad school. Waiting at a bus stop, and a little boy jumped into the street for his toy, right in front of the bus. The bus wasn't going to stop for another 10 feet. So I grabbed him by both shoulders and jumped back and we both fell onto the sidewalk, but clear of the street at a bus. His mother, who was about 30 or 40 feet away, ran up and started screaming her head off that I'd attack her boy. I suspect she'd have gotten violent with me if there wasn't a small group of folks who were helping us up and making sure we were okay. Someone, maybe bus driver, told her that her boy might have been dead instead of having a skinned elbow. She still didn't apologize and just turned her anger on the bus driver, who she accused of trying to kill her boy. It really was something else. I left my name and number with a bus driver in case that woman made a complaint like she threatened because the driver hadn't done anything wrong either. I'm glad you had a group of people to back you up. Stories like yours are exactly why I say being a parent does the opposite of lend you credibility. I almost feel for that mom because it's like she physically couldn't reason in that moment. My child was hurt, was overriding her brain function, and she had to point blame with her only consideration being where to point it. Next story. Am I the a-hole for wanting to spend time with my wife instead of babysitting my little sister? I, 24 male, and my wife recently had our 5-year anniversary. We had planned to go to a nice restaurant, then ride in a hot air balloon and then go to a lake and relax. I was going to buy her flowers and all. Then, out of the blue, a day before my anniversary, I get a text from my mom demanding me to babysit my sister for a week while she and my dad go visit my aunt who recently got diagnosed with leukemia. Now, I love my sister. We're 18 years apart but are still closer than ever. She has a bit of a mental challenge but otherwise is a pretty normal kid. I was debating whether to say yes but I didn't want a kid in tow while I was having a date with my wife. So I politely declined and didn't get an answer. So I thought it was okay. The next day we're at the restaurant when my phone starts buzzing like crazy. I check it and it's filled with text from my mom and dad. They're calling me all sorts of things and saying that they showed up at my house, only for it to be empty. They're now ignoring me, when I write to them and I haven't gotten an answer. 
Am I the a-hole? Edit. My sister is currently staying with a family friend who we've known all our lives. The friend has two kids who are very close to my sister. The family friend said she wouldn't mind keeping her for the week as she gets a break from her twins and encouraged me to relax. My aunt is not in critical condition. She is doing fine. She also lives far away and it takes a couple of hours to get to her. Not the a-hole. This is ludicrous. Whose child is this? One day before my anniversary, I get a text from my mom demanding me to babysit my sister for a week while she and my dad go visit my aunt. They need to understand that this is not how things work. One thing I don't see anyone pointing out is, in Opie's edit, they say the aunt isn't in critical condition. If there is no rush, why did his parents choose the exact date of his anniversary to go out of town? They could have easily waited a couple days when Opie's anniversary was over. I get the impression he would have had no issues in watching his sister for the week. It's a human reaction, much like people rushing to see people on their deathbed when you otherwise haven't bothered for a decade. When someone gets a bad diagnosis, people want to visit immediately, even if that's not necessarily helpful. I know people who hide diagnosis for that reason, because there's a feeling time is running out. Entirely possible that in the instinctive panic they forgot the anniversary. If the parents had an honest miscommunication when they were worried that wouldn't be an a-hole territory. But their blowing up at OP when he texted them a polite decline is firmly in a-hole territory. Worst case, they ignored his polite decline and were intent on dropping her off anyway, which is firmly a-hole territory. In either case, his parents are the a-holes. Not the a-hole. You had plans. You politely declined, with notice. You are not your sister's keeper. It's on them to find a sitter and they had plenty of time to do so, but they failed to do that. I hope you had a lovely anniversary in spite of it all. Even with the info that your aunt was diagnosed with leukemia, you're not the a-hole. It was still on them to either make other plans or communicate with you at all, rather than making demands. If they chose to go just one day later, then you could have decided if you'd be willing to keep your sister for a week. There were workarounds and other options. They just chose to ignore all of them. They're calling me all sorts of things and saying that they showed up at my house, only for it to be empty. The fact that you're even asking if you're the a-hole combined with the above suggests them ignoring your answers to them asking you for something probably isn't that new. I can see why they'd want to comfort your aunt, but you had plans. It was your anniversary, and no is a full sentence, not the a-hole. Yes, the thing that irked me is they demanded it, instead of asking. If my parents called me upset and were like, we have this really devastating situation and we really need your help, can you watch X for Y number of days? I would definitely help, even if it was not ideal timing. But tell me I'm doing it? Politely F off. Next story. Am I the a-hole for cussing at a teacher after she gave my information to a reporter? I'm one of the few but growing number of single men who forgot marriage and became a dad on my own. In my case, I used a surrogate three times, so I have three boys between ages of 5 and 10. When they started school and started to make friends, I did tell a few parents because they wanted to know more about me before letting their kids spend time with my kids. Most were intrigued for a few minutes, but that went away once they realized how normal we are. I'm neither advocate nor opponent of single-parent surrogacy. I did what worked for me. I also don't promote it the same way people promote their personal lives for clout. In fact, I haven't told anybody about it in years. That brings me to my son's second grade teacher, Mrs. F. I got a random call from a reporter asking to interview me for a magazine piece on men resorting to surrogacy to have kids. I thought it was a joke, but he had all sorts of information including the names of my kids and what I did for work. I asked how he got my information, and he said from Mrs. F who is a friend of his. In fact, she gave him my number. I was pissed. The next day, I told Mrs. F about a call, and she said it would be so exciting to be in a magazine and online. I asked, why the heck did she put my personal life out there? That's a total betrayal. She said she didn't know I'd be that upset and simply thought that I'd be open to it. I told her that I didn't tell her my business, let alone give her permission to spread. She didn't say anything, so I called her a freaking moron who needs to grow the heck up. She probably thought I'd complain to the principal, but that's not my style. I won't tell you stuff to your face. But now the vice principal is acting like an intermediary between us after she said I cussed her out. He did say that I was out of line, but that she was even more way out of line. 
Andy asked me to be understanding because she's young and lives online. I told him that he's just mad that he actually has to do some work now. And the funny part is that I'm not even mad at her anymore. I don't like her, but it's not like she matters in a few months. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The vice principal needs to not be making excuses for her. What she did was disrespectful, rude, and unethical. You do not give out other people's personal information without their permission. If she wanted to give her friend a lead, she could have said, Hey, I know a single dad who might be a good fit. Let me ask him if he'd like to talk to you. And that's it. Nothing about your contact info, life, and especially not about your children. Actually, she may have broken a law. I'm not super familiar with FERPA, but she may have seriously violated it. That is no joke either. It's a serious violation. There is so much protection in what school can give about children. I'd ask for a list of the kids' names for a Christmas cards thing my little sister wanted to do. They were not allowed to give it because it was sensitive data. I cannot imagine how many were broken to not only give their names, but also the parents' contact info and his occupation. He asked me to be understanding because she's young and lives online. You were understanding. You didn't report her to the principal in an attempt to get her fired. Instead, you reamed her like she deserved to be. Logical consequences. Not the a-hole. I think that was his way of blaming it over a generational misunderstanding between a Gen Z and a millennial. Millennials and Gen Z aren't this stupid, however. A majority of us know better than to give out information like this without permission. Especially now with the way certain states are getting into U.S. If this happened here, not the a-hole, but the VPN teacher are and need to be held accountable. I don't even give friends other friends' numbers. I'll contact the third party myself and let them know who is looking for them, or text the askers info. But I'm not just handing out other people's stuff. Last story. Am I the a-hole for arguing with my wife and refusing to fire the nanny? Hi, male 30s live with my wife, female 30s. We both work full-time jobs and have three kids ages 3, 6, and 7. I used to work from home with flexible hours, but I've been offered a promotion which requires me to go to work in person. The pay increase is really significant, so my wife and I agreed I should take the promotion and hire a part-time nanny for our kids. I got in touch with a nanny agency and they matched us to someone who lives local. They only told us her first name, which was a really common name anyway, but for the sake of storytelling, we'll say her name is Sarah. I spoke to Sarah on the phone and she seemed really nice. We arranged today for her to come over and meet my wife and the kids and for us to show her around the house. When the day came around and we met her, it turned out that my wife already knew Sarah. It was really awkward and I wasn't sure how they knew each other until afterwards. My wife told me that back when she was in high school, her boyfriend at a time cheated on her with Sarah who was in her class. She wasn't enthusiastic about it, but my wife didn't seem to have a problem with Sarah being our nanny at first. Our kids love her. She has lots of experience and she's available when we need her. After a couple of weeks with pretty much no issues, my two oldest kids come to me and say that they don't want Sarah to come back. I ask them why, and they said she's evil. I ask why they think she's evil, and our six-year-old starts crying and says that Sarah's mean and wants to hurt mommy. I talked to my wife in private, and at first she said she had no idea what the kids were talking about, and that it must be because of something Sarah did. When I pressed it, my wife admitted that she told the kids that Sarah's evil. She said she knows it was a ridiculous plan, but she was hoping I'd fire her. My wife asked me to fire the nanny because their history makes her uncomfortable. I asked why it wasn't an issue before, and my wife said she just needed to think about it, and she's decided Sarah has to go. I told my wife that we can find another nanny, but until then, there's no reason to get rid of Sarah, and that she was out of line for trying to weaponize the kids against her when Sarah's no danger to them. My wife disagreed and said that we need to just fire Sarah ASAP and hire a temporary babysitter until we can find another nanny. She said that she wasn't weaponizing the kids, she was just setting boundaries. This turned into a really heated argument, and I called my wife insecure and controlling and told her she needs to go to therapy. My wife said I'm being inconsiderate of her feelings and need to put myself in her shoes. This was one of our biggest arguments in a very long time, and I just want a neutral opinion on whether I was wrong. Everyone sucks here. Your wife shouldn't be talking trash about Sarah to your kids, but you also shouldn't be insisting that Sarah remain hired. There are plenty of other people who I'm sure would be equally as nice and fun as Sarah, with the added bonus that this one won't have painful beef with your wife. 
this. Everyone sucks here. Or B, this is just ridiculous. Your wife was way out of line to say that to the kids and try to use them like that. And it sounds like she did some actual, hopefully just temporary, emotional damage in doing so. But she's right, Sarah needs to go, immediately. Why the heck would you want to keep your wife in a clearly uncomfortable position, much less continue to keep your kids in this situation? Keeping Sarah around for a couple weeks more, just because you don't want to bother finding someone to fill in until you and your wife find a permanent replacement is a terrible idea, and it shows your wife and kids that you don't give a crap about their feelings. Save your kids and your marriage, and Sarah, frankly, and more foster clock exposure. Plus, I'm sure it's a bit of a slap in the face to feel like her husband is picking Sarah over her. Yes, it was very naive to have hired Sarah in the first place. Oh, but well, my wife seemed okay with it. I'm sure it will be fine. Just no. Sometimes someone is perfectly nice and qualified, but just not a good fit. Especially in a job like a nanny, where the person is spending lots of time in your personal spaces. And I'm sure there are any number of other equally qualified and equally nice nanny candidates that the agency could refer. Equally, I am horrified that the wife would frighten her children like that, in a passive-aggressive attempt to get Opie to fire Sarah, as opposed to just saying, Hey honey, I gave it a try for a few weeks, but I'm just not comfortable having Sarah as a nanny, because of our past history. The fact that the wife felt the need to do such a roundabout manipulation rather than just talking, I think Opie is right in that she could benefit from some counseling, because that is not a normal or healthy way to deal with conflict. But hiring Sarah in the first place was dumb. Everyone sucks here.